Good evening and welcome to our midweek service here at beautiful Savior Lutheran Church, where we invite all in Christ to live in grace, generosity, reaching out, advocacy, compassion, and encouragement. Our midweek service is meant to be an evening prayer service with influences from the Tizé community of France and the Iona community of Scotland. It will be filled with simple hymns, chants, prayers, and a reflection. And as always, there is a Holy Communion that is offered to all who wish to receive it. All are welcomed and all are invited to the Lord's table here. And as we begin this evening, a couple of quotes from the larger church. We don't love people so they believe in Christ. We love people because that's what Christ would do. From Carlos Rodriguez. And Thomas Merton reminds us that I cannot discover God in myself and myself in God unless I have the courage to face myself exactly as I am with all my limitations and to accept others as they are with all their limitations. Let us pray. God, open to us today the sea of your mercy and water us with full streams from the riches of your grace and springs of your kindness. Make us children of quietness and heirs of peace. Kindle in us the fire of your love. Strengthen our weakness by your power and bind us close to you and to each other. Amen.
the prophet shares this oracle of praise. O Lord, you are my God, I will exalt you. I will praise your name. For you have done wonderful things, plans formed of old, faithful and sure. Come, Holy Spirit. Come, Holy Spirit. Come, Holy Spirit. Come, Holy Spirit. Maranatha. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not be in want. The Lord makes me lie down in green pastures and leads me beside still waters. You restore my soul, O Lord, and guide me along right pathways for your name's sake. Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I shall fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil, and my cup is running over. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. not the usual gospel passage, or what we call gospel. But isn't the 23rd Psalm good news? It's an interesting psalm. It's an oddity, actually, if you read amongst all the psalms. In fact, the psalm that immediately precedes it begins with, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me?
Laments are actually the most common form of psalm. As people cry out in pain, in fear, frustration, anger. With the world, with one another, even with God. And yet this is the one we often hear. Maybe it comes from the fact that we often hear it at funerals. It's this statement of peace and joy, of the fulfillment of all that is in the kingdom, where there's no more tears, no more pain, no more want, no more fear. But the Jewish person who wrote this psalm didn't have a concept of an afterlife. And they wrote it in the present tense. And to be honest, it is probably one of the boldest statements of faith in the world. Now, one thing to be clear is the opposite of faith is not doubt. The opposite of faith is certainty. We can be certain of all kinds of things, which means we have no trust for anything else. And the reason why I say this is a statement of faith is it was written by someone in a place in the world that if we know anything of history, what's happening now is not some new occasion. That area has been plowed over and fought over for millennia. Accessed east or west or north or south. much less any ideological reasons. If we read the the Old Testament at all, it's almost a history of war. And oftentimes, the writer was on the losing side. The side that was occupied the side that was kicked out, the side that lost. And yet there's this bold statement of faith. And maybe that's what we need. Even as we look at it through the lens of the Good Shepherd, Jesus Christ, Do we believe that the Lord is my shepherd or the Lord will be my shepherd? Do we believe that the Lord walks with us through the valley of the shadow of death and comforts us and provides for us and anoints our head or will do those things sometime later, maybe if we're good enough. Because I'm certain that if we're sure that maybe sometime, kind of, sort of, in a way, something good might maybe happen if you're good enough, I guess, What do we proclaim as good news? The fact you might win the eternal lottery? Or do we proclaim a living, active, present faith that is with us now and that calls us to do things? It calls us to live. 
It calls us to walk through the valley of the shadow of death. It calls us to have dinner in the presence of your enemies. Heck, Jesus had dinner with some of the people who would eventually betray him. It calls us to rest, and it calls us to go. And it calls us not seeking, not searching for the house of the Lord. It calls us to live out of the fact that we will live in the house of the Lord forever. And if goodness and mercy shall follow you, Are you bringing goodness and mercy to all those in your wake? So how might the good shepherd, the one who is, be with you this night and tomorrow morning And where will he lead you with goodness and mercy? I remember that God loves you, and so do I. Amen. Let us pray. Risen Christ, tirelessly you say to us, I leave you my peace. May your hearts not be troubled or afraid. And by your Holy Spirit, you come to dwell in us. We would like to renew our trust in your presence. There we find joy in living, which makes life beautiful for those who are entrusted to us. Amen. Prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. Hmm. 
are you my enemies? I hope not. I didn't tell any bad jokes today. But how often do we eat with those we consider our enemies? How often do we distance ourselves? In a world that seems to be more and more divided along various ideological lines, and tribalism, how often do you eat with those you don't agree with? And what have we lost in the process? I know a number of people already are having anxiety over who they're inviting for Thanksgiving dinner and who's going to sit next to whom. And there was Jesus, and at that one supper, the person sitting immediately next to him on one side was Judas. I guess Jesus should have double-checked the guest list. Or yet again, he's trying to show us something. For we call it the Last Supper, but here we are 2,000 years later doing it again. Believing and hoping that in this meal we know the presence of Christ, that Christ is here. That in faith he is present. That there wasn't a last. That there's something new that will come. Maybe in these meals, in this meal, something new will come by the gift of the Spirit and the grace of God. So we remember on the night in which our Savior was betrayed, He took bread, He blessed it and broke it, gave it for us to eat and said, Take and eat, all of you. This is my body. It's given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And after supper, He took the cup. After giving thanks, he gave it for all to drink, saying, Take and drink. This cup contains the blood of the new covenant shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in remembrance of me. But may we remember not just this historical event, not this one meal that happened in an upper room in Jerusalem 2,000 years ago, but may we remember this promise that he is here present, that God's love and God's faith, God's grace continues. And may that lead us into newness of life and allow us by the gift of the Holy Spirit to go forward walking through the valleys, finding those spaces of rest, but continuing to live and go forth in, in mercy and goodness all the days of our life. So may this gift of this meal, this gift of grace, this blessing that is here now and always sustain us and lift us up into newness of life so that we may go forth and proclaim Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Remember us in your kingdom, dear Lord, And teach us to pray. God in heaven, your name is to be honored. May your new community of hope be realized on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today the essentials of life. Release us from our wrongdoing as we also release those who wrong us. Do not test us beyond our enduring. Save us from all that is evil. For you embrace justice, love, and peace now and to the end of time. Amen.
And I know for some that still sounds a little odd because, wait a minute, that's one of the Iona versions of the prayer Jesus taught us. All are invited and welcome to communion this evening, as always in this church. You'll be invited to come down the center aisle and receive the wafers. They're all gluten-free. Communion is by intinction, which means to dip. The chalice has two uh, chambers to it. There is the smaller chamber, which has grape juice. The larger chamber has wine. You will be invited to participate, not just receive, but again participate in the, giving, the receiving and giving of good news. And that is, if you are so willing, after you've had a chance to take and dip in the chalice, that you take the chalice from the person in front of you and turn and offer it to the person behind you in line with the words, blood of Christ shed for you, or something similar. There are also three prayer stations. One, the one up front is with the electric candles. The two in the back are for regular candles. For those of you joining us online, simple plate, simple cup, bread, crackers, wine, grape juice, something simple. Jesus sat at a banquet table and took the basic simple staples off of it as a reminder of God's enduring presence and what God can do with simple things like us. The body of Christ given for you, the blood of Christ shed for you, Come and receive these gifts of grace.
Let us pray. Jesus, you have set before us great hope that your kingdom will come on earth and have taught us to pray for its coming. Make us ready to celebrate the signs of its dawning and to pray and work for the perfect day when your will shall be done on earth as it is in heaven. Amen. For the day now done, thanks be to God. For the rest before us, thanks be to God. Because God never sleeps so that we can, thanks be to God. But before the day is done, let God's holy name be praised, and let God's people say, Amen. Amen. Amen.